ubiquitous, omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. That's the soul. When you go to sleep, your physical body rests. You fall into a state of unconscious slumber. That is when the soul departs the body and travels to dream state. You believe that when you dream, everything that you're dreaming about is going into your mind. No. That never happens and it never will. That's what they want you to believe. That's the lie. What actually happens is, because your one body is containing many, many souls, not just one. The body is left on earth as an anchor that tethers the soul to the astral plane of existence known as Revelation Earth for a reason, because if that cord was cut, the body would cease to exist and reach terminus. It's like a life umbilical cord, <clears throat> like a life force. So when you fall asleep, the body itself is in a state of unconscious slumber. The mind is now in, an, in a state of unconscious slumber. So now the soul is disconnected from the body, and the mind has nothing to do with this process, as it has nothing to do with anything else except remaining connected to that system. But what I'm trying to say is that when you go to sleep, your dreams don't come to you. You go to them. And when I mean you, I mean you as a soul, not this physical vessel, this shell, this body. Because this isn't you. You are not the body. This earth is not your home. This life is an illusion. That is an undeniable truth, whether you want to realize it or not. <clears throat> but when your soul travels to dream state, you have to understand your dreams are not a metaphor of your own reality. What the soul is actually doing is it's procuring information necessary for you in your earthly journey for the next leg of your confluence, your odyssey, your ambulation. <clears throat> that is necessary for you to have this information. That's what the soul is doing. It's essentially traveling to a resource of unlimited wealth, which is knowledge, wisdom, instructions, everything. Cosmic portals, interdimensional travel. I mean, I can go on forever. And then once the soul comes back and incarnates in the body again, you awaken to this physical state <clears throat> that you think is reality. And you're ready to go for the next day. As well, when you hear ringing in your ears, that's a clear sign of sulfagio frequencies. Your spirit guides are contacting you through this means. Divine transmissions are being sent through your heart to your soul. This is another form of communication from the cosmos to the soul through the heart. Never to the mind. Ever. Not ever. That's why I always must emphasize that the mind is not privy to this relationship. It is not integral. It is not essential. It is non-essential to the integral workings of the universe. So once you understand that, then you clearly understand that you are not the body. The mind belongs to the body. Because after all, how can you have an out-of-body experience if you're leaving the mind behind? You can't. They've made you believe over the duration of your natural life that this is the nucleus of everything. It's not. It's not the nucleus of anything. Not whatsoever. And it never will be. <clears throat> because everything they told you, that's what they wanted you to know to be the truth. But they conveniently left out the actual truth. The cosmic truth. That, unfortunately, you have to find out for yourself, sometimes the hard way. At the expense of losing friends and family and being called a conspiracy theorist. But such is life. That's just the way it goes sometimes. But when you sleep, your dreams don't come to you. Your soul leaves the body and it leaves the earth. And it travels. It astral travels through the astral planes of light, the ethers of dark matter, the in-between flux potential fields, everywhere. <clears throat> it's not limited. But the beautiful thing is that when you return to this body, you bring back with you a plethora of information that you need to help you and help others. That's the whole point. And also, when you receive divine transmissions, these are light language activation codes that help you heal. That's how much the universe is willing to help you help yourself, no matter what predicament you have may create, you may have created for yourself or you may find yourself in. That is what you call unconditional love from God to you whether you realize it or not. Before I end this video, 
<clears throat> I want you to understand one thing. Religion, all religion, not just some, not just most, not just many, all religions are the matrix. This is the nucleus of the matrix. It always has been. It always will be. Why? Because religion is the oldest form of propaganda on earth. Propaganda is the nucleus of this matrix. The Vatican is the nucleus of all of this stuff. And Mecca. And Tel Aviv. And all of this. It's all right in there. So don't believe otherwise that this religion is better than that one. And this one is this and that. They're all the same. Best thing you can do is make that determination for yourself. I've already presented the facts in previous videos. If religion were the word of God, religion would be as old as God. Always was, always will be. And there's no religion that has an eternal, you know, time stamp on it. It doesn't exist. The oldest religion known on earth is Hinduism at 4,500 years old. If you don't believe me, go research yourself. Grab your phone. And put in world's oldest religion. And you see what comes up. Religion is the nucleus of the matrix. No matter what religion it is. It's all the same. It all falls under the same umbrella. That is the great deception. That's why they have you running to churches and mosques and synagogues and temples and shuls and wherever else they gather. Because they're harnessing your energy in these places. For purposes that do not relate to the earth. So now you know.